Hi folks, uh, today we are going to be showing you the process of printing out a 3D model of a protein structure uh, using a dual extrusion 3D printer. Uh, we're going to tell you the process from the beginning of finding the actual structure online to preparing it for slicing, printing it, and processing the model. So let's go ahead and have a look. Hi folks, uh, today I'm going to talk to you about how to select uh, process and print a 3D protein structure uh, with a 3D printer. Our 3D printer is the Ultimaker S5, uh, but lots of 3D printers that have especially dual extrusion capabilities will be great for this kind of a project. Uh, so the first thing you're going to want to do is go to the RCSB protein data bank. Uh, this is uh, a worldwide collaborative effort to gain or to compile all structures that have been solved into one place so it's easy to find protein structural data. Uh, also there's a, other uh, macromolecular data like DNA and RNAs in this uh, in this data bank if you wish to find them. Uh, it's pretty easy for you to search this just by the ID. So for example if you wanted to print a protein uh, model of hemoglobin you could just go uh, here and type in hemoglobin and then it's going to give you all the possible things that are involved with hemoglobin. So here's deoxyhemoglobin. Uh, here is a hemoglobin receptor binding to um, it, its ligand. So these are not all hemoglobin but they're all related to hemoglobin in some way. Um, it's pretty nice because you, you can look through all the different structures that have been solved and you can kind of get their their uh, literature reference that was where the pub that was published. Uh, as well as find some interesting structural data that we might be interested in. If you look at all these entries, they all have a unique four-letter signifier or identifier that's uh, that specifically calls to that model. So if you really wanted to do this one, you would type in 1FN3. Uh, I, for example, already have done a little bit of research, and I know that my hemoglobin I'm interested in is 1HHO. So I can just type that in, and it's going to bring up the structure of oxyhemoglobin at 2.1 angstrom resolution. Uh, this is an old structure from 1983, and so this one is one uh, that it has been around for a while. And as you can see down here in the validation, this actually has a pretty crappy kind of uh, metrics in, in some areas. So Ramachandran outliers, the backbone torsional angles are not right um, for a perfect model. Now that may be correct, but it's uh, they seem to have um, some poor validation in these areas. But it's good enough for me to to do to work with and this is an old model so there's probably newer data out there that would be uh, effective at, at talking about this stuff so um, I'm gonna go ahead and, and process uh, proceed with this I'm gonna take my 1HHO and I'm gonna import that uh, into the program called uh, UCSF Chimera Chimera is a freeware uh, structural visualization software that's distributed by the University of California at San Francisco uh, it is very fully functional. It's very similar to PyMol, in fact, uh, but it has a few fe features that we're going to use for processing our models for 3D printing, such as native export to STL. So uh, I know that I want to work with uh, one HHO, so I can just go up here to fetch by ID, type in my PDB ID, one HHO, and there comes my uh, hemoglobin. Now, if you look in deep down into this molecule, you can actually see the heme rings and the iron molecule, and it's also has natively shown. Uh, the oxygen and then the proximal histidine residues, some of the key active site residues is automatically shown, uh, which is very nice. Uh, but if you notice, there's actually only one, two heme rings shown here, uh, which is only half of what a hemoglobin molecule will contain. And this is because uh, the way that protein structures are solved is using uh, the asymmetric cell or the, the uh, unit cell of the uh, of the crystal. So you solve the unit cell and then you can use symmetry mates to be able to make the rest of it uh, happen. So right now I only have half the molecule, uh, but I can put its symmetry mate in to complete it. So I'm going to go up here to tools, general controls, command line, and play, type in the word uh, command sim and that'll pop populate its symmetry mate, which we can then um, now see has all four of our uh, active sites there. One, two, three, four heme rings. It looks like we have some sort of a phosphate here in the uh, center of the molecule, but that's um, not that important. So we could always print this like a ribbon, uh, leave it like this, and it, it, the 3D printer would spit out all the side chains and things, but that's going to require a lot of support. Uh, 3D printer can't just print into midair and have it stay there. We need to build struts underneath this thing to support some of these loops and helices. So sometimes it's easier for us to print uh, as a surface. 
Now, when you have a large structure like this, sometimes it's going to be hard for it to find the surfaces. Uh, for example, the protein surface actually looks really, really good, uh, but the heme structures and stuff that's deeper in the molecule is hard for the, mo for the model to, uh, to generate. So you can see here's one hemoglobin, two hemoglobins, or sorry, those are hemes. Uh, this is all one hemoglobin. Each of the uh, each of the mo monomers, the alpha and beta subunits, are going to have a single heme in them. So you can see that those are embedded. We could print this as it is right now if we wished uh, in its native R state, uh, its oxyhemoglobin state, if we wished, or we could do some further processing to make this look a little nicer. So I'm going to go ahead and think about what I want to do to make this the pretty model that I want to end up with. Because once we commit to printing, uh, it's a little hard to go back and tweak things without starting over. So, for example, uh, these heme rings that I have down buried inside the molecule, um, those are actually uh, just ball and stick models, and that's not very useful for me uh, when I'm looking at this, because when we print this, it's just going to be these tiny little things hanging off, and these actually aren't even mounted really into the model. Uh, there's a little bit of connection through the heme, uh, through the iron in, inside the heme ring, but that's actually just ionically or co uh, coordinated into these, um, into the porphyrin ring system. And so I actually am going to have to think about what I want to display this as. I may actually want to make this as a, as a, either a larger sphere model or some other model that makes it look a little nicer. So I am going to select my non-standard re residues, my heme. That selects all my hemes, all four of those. So with all four of those selected, now I can decide how I want to display this. So in actions, I can go to atoms and bonds, and I want to show these as a sphere. That makes it look more similar to what the rest of the model looks like in terms of the space filling, um, which is kind of what I want. I want to look at the surface. And you can actually see how the hemes kind of are on the surface of this molecule. In fact, you can see um, the gaps that an oxygen molecule may have to, un to go through in order to make stuff happen. Now, if you notice here, we have a, a ordered water molecule kind of hanging out, that little red dot. Uh, I don't think I want to print that, mostly because it's it's not actually connected to anything. It'll just it'll confuse the 3D printer. And so what I can do here, again, is select residue, HOH, that's just a water molecule. And then I just want to go ahead and hide that. I don't want any ordered waters. I also may want to think about my oxygen. If you look down in that cleft, you can actually see the O2 molecule. Do I actually want to show that? I think it's going to be too hard for this to actually be seen. So I'm going to go ahead and again select my residue uh, oxygen and I would like to hide that. Anything we do in this program right now uh, is going to make it, is going to show up when we print the model. So if you remember in the middle of this molecule we also had like a phosphate molecule and so I want to also hide that. And I will, uh, atoms and bonds, hide. So I think that's a look pretty, pretty good looking model. You can see that the, uh, the traditional R state of hemoglobin is closed down. There are no holes, no gaps. It's a very tight structure uh, when it's bound to oxygen. I mean, there is some deeper pores, but it, there's not the same kind of a, a donut hole as we see in deoxyhemoglobin. So I think this is a pretty good depiction of where I want to be. Now, if you want to show the different uh, domains, for example, if you want to paint this model one day, uh, after it's printed, what we can do would be to uh, go ahead and select our chains. Chain A is uh, alpha. We can select either just the one or we can select them all. I'm going to go ahead and select all chain A's because we have symmetry mates here. And I would like to color those. So let's go to actions, uh, color, and let's give it a good uh, orange color. And so those are my alpha subunits and then my beta subunits. I will color a different color. I don't don't judge my artistic skills here, but chain B, all of them, and let's color that. Uh, yeah, God, not cyan, green. That uh, looks ugly, but you can see the difference between the alpha and beta subunits of hemoglobin here, and just as a just as a way of kind of showing everything. Now, uh, let's imagine I don't like that, which is uh, hard to imagine. Uh, I can just go ahead and recolor that if I want, reselect, and say color. Uh, let's see, just, we can just go, you know, uh, white, there, that's a little better. So this won't actually show up in the 3D printer, but it's kind of useful for you in designing where the paint or deciding where the paints are going to go. And I can do the same kind of thing. If I want to select my hemes, 
I can select those and then color those. And uh, we can do it by heteroatom, which is the uh, oxygen nitrogen color scheme, or we can color it in other ways by elements, if you like, however you want to do that. But this, I think this is kind of what I want to do with my model is I want to show the different alpha and beta domains and then color my hemes so I can clearly see where those surface positions are for oxygen and CO2 binding. So now I just want to export this. Um, I want to export my scene. And the scene that, the way you export these is by uh, making them into an STL. And so I'm just going to call this oxyhemoglobin. And once the uh, export tool finishes, then we are pretty much ready to go on importing this into our slicing software. Uh, since we have the Ultimaker S5, our slicing software uh, is the uh, Ultimaker Cura program. So once this finishes, then I'll jump into Cura. All right, so Ultimaker Cura is a freeware program available for Ultimaker 3D printers. It also works for other 3D printers, and it's pretty extensible and pretty uh, easy to use, in fact, uh, because it, it, it'll do several features that are going to be helpful for us uh, in designing this. So I want to go ahead and open up uh, my hemoglo oxyhemoglobin. Okay. And it'll import my STL I just exported. This is at a standard resolution. I believe uh, this is printed out, um, I don't know, this will print about a three, three inch wide uh, protein model. And you can actually kind of see what's going to be printed here. Um, this looks like it's pretty well uh, flat onto the surface. Uh, if you were to look around, this has a kind of a low resolution form of what we saw, but you can actually see those hemes that we just made as a sphere model is kind of poking out right there. So this will print this uh, the way we want it to, and we just want to make sure that everything imported correctly um, and that we'll be able to do this. You can do some uh, playing with some uh, scaling or rotating it, if, or if you want to play with it and move it around a little bit, that's cool. But one thing you're going to want to know is... is couple things. Uh, what kind of material do you want to print this out of? Most times we'll print out of PLA polylactic acid, which is a, a biodegradable polymer under some good conditions. It's also pretty easy to work with. Uh, it uh, is very cheap, so it's, it's a good place to start if you're starting to print these. Of course, there's lots of other materials that you can choose from, but I'm just going to stick with PLA. Um, we also have a secondary extruder um, on this, and I uh, need to print this onto some sort of a soluble matrix. So my extruder 2, I actually need to uh, print with PVA, polyvinyl acetate, or sorry, not polyvinyl alcohol, which essentially is like Elmer's glue. Elmer's glue uh, is going to be used as a build support on the bottom of this. That'll help uh, buff, uh, buttress it as we start to print up. If you look down here kind of at the bottom, if you can see it, uh, this actually only touches the build plate at these two little bumps and that's kind of a problem with protein structures in general is they don't sit nicely and so we have to build supports for a lot of this area over here that we couldn't just build off these bumps and build a huge system so we're going to need to have supports under it and you can, if you go into layer view um, once we get the layers calculated it'll show us where all the supports need to be built but right now I'm just going to go ahead and prepare uh, my model for printing. Uh, a couple things we need to know is the resolution. Uh, how, how many layers do you want and how thin do you want them? Uh, this is a 60 micron layer that'll give us a really smooth looking print and a really detailed print, but it's also going to take us a lot longer. Uh, a 200 micron print uh, or 0.2 millimeters is going to be pretty relatively fast, but it'll have some, uh, some noticeable bumps in it. Um, somewhere in this range is a pretty good medium, but 200 is actually not bad for these models. Uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't be too worried about seeing those. We also need to be sure we generate supports, and because of that, we also need to have, be sure that we adhere this to the plate. Uh, in fact, I wouldn't worry about this too much because all of those supports that are going to be built are going to act as our adhesion. So uh, just keep that in mind. So if you want to or not, it'll just add a little bit of time. Uh, it doesn't matter much to me, so why don't we just go ahead and do that. So I'm going to go ahead and prepare this for slicing. Uh, this is going to break it into all of its little layers and program the machine to tell us, uh, tell the machine what to uh, actually do. All right, so it's just finishing slicing right now. This is going to be a 10-hour, 44-minute print. 
Um, this is going to cost us $4.35 in PVA, and it'll cost us, if I program this in, let's see, how much is it going to cost me in PLA? Uh, let's see, materials for raw PLA, generic PLA is about $25 for a kilogram. So this is going to cost us about a uh, dollar in actual model material and 435 in support material. And the support material is actually going to be removed. So the most of our costs here uh, are going to be with the supports that we actually throw away, which is kind of a, a pain, but it's really the only way to print these models effectively um, and be able to process them in a reasonable amount of time without having to cut off and, and shave this thing down and lose some of the actual detail in the model. So it's, it's, it's a price worth paying in my opinion. So this is going to cost uh, take us 10 hours and 44 minutes. If you want to see how the structures are going to be built, it's going to show us our layers if you go to layer view. And I can make it show extruder 2, which is our actual layer. And so if I look at the model, you can actually see it's going to be built kind of as a giant mountain. Um, most of this is actually going to be Most of this is actually just going to be support material. But if I play the little animation, you can actually see what's going to happen. And if you also pick one of these, you can also see kind of what the actual printer is going to be doing. It's going to be going around the edge and building a wall around that little mountain. And this is almost ex uh, exclusively in just extruder, extruder 2, which is our support material. It's going to make a grid line lattice work that what's going to be used to support this map, this model. And we can change our, our, uh, our layer, kind of see what's happening up here. Now we have both the uh, support material lattice as well as the actual protein model structure being printed. And so you can nicely see uh, some of the what's going to happen. And you can look at it before it actually gets submitted for printing and you start spending money on it. So I think I'm happy with this. I'm going to go ahead and save this to file. Um, this is the UFP is what the Ultimaker will take. You can export it in other ways too if you have other printers. And it just needs to print that. And then I'll just take her over to the 3D printer on a USB drive. Uh, you could theoretically also do this over the network if you wished, but um, I use a USB drive usually. So uh, once this is done, uh, we'll show you what the 3D printer does. Here's the final printed model of the R form of hemoglobin. You can see that um, it is exactly what we had in the program. Uh, we can also see several of the small features that we programmed in, such as the heme as a sphere model here on each of the subunits. Uh, and to contrast it with the, the T form, the deoxy form of hemoglobin versus the R form, you can see that there's distinct differences between the shapes. For example, we have a pocket in the middle here versus no pocket in the oxy form. And so that would be an example of, of a great print from, um, from our 3D models. So now it's just time to, uh, to prime and paint this thing uh, in the way that we want to. We can um, highlight specific residues if you wish. Um, the key thing I forgot to tell you is that if you watch that video, you can notice that it was printed on a PVA support structure. Uh, the way that I got this model to be completed was to uh, dissolve away that support structure by soaking this um, for the whole weekend uh, in just some warm water, and I did exchanges every now and again, but it, essentially all that PVA is, is just Elmer's glue, uh, and then it just washes away as long as you soak it long enough. So um, all we were left with was the polylactic acid um, model, and the PVA support has just gone down the drain, which is kind of nice. So it leaves us with a, with a decent looking model that we can then use for whatever purposes we decide.